Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, we are talking about the container component in the Canvas UI Builder. To start exploring the container, let's drag one out into my blank page. The container is at the top of the toolbox. It is in the layout section. As you can see, it says container. Drag it out here so we have our container. Uh, by default, a container always comes with one row and uh, that row has one cell. Structurally, container can contain only rows and those rows will contain cells and cells will contain your static or dynamic content. You can add additional rows to your containers simply by dragging a row into your container. As you can see, I'm doing that right now. So now my container has three different rows and each row has its own cell. The layout of those rows is always top to bottom. You cannot change that because uh, that's how container works. The cells, the number of cells that you can have in a single row cannot be more than 12. And let me show you why. Uh, I will assign a color to that container just so it stands out on our blank page. And I will open it up for a preview. So here's our page. This is the container. Of course, we don't have any delineation for the rows because we didn't assign any kind of borders. But let's take a look at what these rows consist of. So I'm going to go into the inspect just to see the HTML. And as you can see, these are three rows right here. And notice these boxes that appear in each row. So these boxes uh, are really just placeholders for the cells. And when I said that you, you can have no more than 12 cells, the reason for that is because these placeholders are fixed. Uh, if you don't take up that space, nothing's going to render, but those placeholders do exist. And this is something to keep in mind when you think about how you want to lay out your content if you are using the container component. Let's go back in here, uh, clean it up a little bit, remove the rows that we don't need, and let's just stay with that one uh, row. I'm going to get rid of that background color just so it's all a little bit lighter. And uh, here's our cell. This is the default width, and you can change it. Uh, that when you select your cell, there is a width property. Notice that the values for the width for your cell, uh, there is a full width, half width, and then there are these 12 values that would indicate different type of width for, uh, for your cell. So if I want to do half width, I can easily select half width, and as you can see, it takes half of the space, which uh, if you when, when you as assign half width, it would be the same thing as obviously uh, 6 twelfths, which we don't have here because there is half width. But uh, whenever you assign a particular value and it takes up the space and you add another cell, w the total width combined of all the cells on the row cannot be more than 12 twelfths because otherwise the layout is going to be somewhat crooked. So if I were to add another cell in here, so now there are two cells, this one is 8 twelfths, then this one uh, can be default or it's going to be four twelfths. And in this case, these two, when these two combined, we, we get one whole. Uh, so no more than 12 cells per row, uh, really infinite number of rows in the container. That's kind of going to be the grid system that you will be operating with. You could have fixed rows uh, for kind of static content if you're thinking about creating uh, a page or a part of your application that needs that fixed layout. But uh, the, the important thing to keep in mind is that the container component uh, is very powerful because it supports dynamic list behavior. And this dynamic list behavior is very useful whenever you need to render dynamic content in your container, specifically a, a type of dynamic content where you want to replicate rows or create those rows dynamically based on the content that comes from, let's say, from the server or from an external URL, and you want to render that content in your container. Uh, before we jump there, some additional things to, uh, to look into. So I'm, I'm, I will select the container. Uh, we have, as we just saw, the background color. In the dimension, you can specify the width that the entire container uh, takes up on the, on the page. The height is automatic, which means that it will be dictated by the contents of your container. 
Uh, margins and paddings are standard in HTML. They are exactly what, what they mean. So padding is going to be the space within that container, uh, and then the margin is the space outside of the container that will be observed. Let's see what other options we have. So the display option uh, will control whether the entire component is displayed or not. Uh, this is the statically configured option. You can also dynamically determine through, uh, through your logic that we will look into that as well as to how to control the visibility of your container. So the display will control the visibility. Uh, some uh, events that occur and the logic that you could assign to a container is going to be available uh, when you click this icon right here. So select a container, you'll see this icon. Or whenever a container is selected, there is also icon right here where it says Add Logic. Something to keep in mind is when this icon is gray, that means there is no logic. If this icon is green, that, that means there is some logic assigned to your container. So click on this. So these are the logic blocks that you can attach to your container. Visibility logic uh, controls whether this uh, container should be visible or not. So when you add this logic, you can control it there. Dynamic items logic is the logic that you can add to uh, control what this container should be showing. So this is the logic that controls the actual data model of your container. And data model is an object that needs to be a list of objects, and then that list contains the objects that will be rendered in each row of your container. Let me do a quick demonstration of how this would work. Uh, before uh, we go there, something that I want to mention is when you enable dynamic list behavior, so what this means is that uh, you can assign objects to your container and those objects will be rendered by the container using a template. So what is a template? It's really just the contents of your container. And then the contents are not limited just by one row. In fact, you could have two rows or more than two rows. You can have as many rows as you want, and then the entire contents of everything that you have in the container becomes the template. Okay? Uh, let me ju just do like a quick and dirty demonstration of how this will work. I will be pulling data from the database and just quickly rendering it in my container. Let me switch to back end. And in here, uh, I do have a couple of tables. One of them is called country. And uh, I will just be rendering countries coming from this uh, from this data table. The properties that we uh, will be rendering, let's say uh, they are going to be continent, um, name, and population. So th three uh, pr uh, three properties. And th as you can see, the column names are capitalized, and that's that will be important. Let's switch back to a container, and uh, let's say that this cell, and let me start dragging. Uh, components text uh, this text will say uh, just select this guy and uh, the content is going to be country name and uh, let me just get another text and then this will be dynamic uh, and in here we will render population And in here, in this cell, we will render a continent. So these are uh, these labels is going to be the static text, and then for each, we also will need to add dynamic text that will render the actual uh, data coming from the database. So one goes in here, and one goes in here. Okay. Let's ignore the actual layout uh, for, a s for a moment. We will fix that once we, have, uh, once we have the data coming from the database. So when, uh, when the page loads, we want to bring this data and assign it to our uh, container. Uh, whenever, we whenever you work with containers that uh, have dynamic list behavior, it is always a good idea to assign a proper ID because in the codeless logic, you will be re referring to that container. So we can say that this will be called countries container. And in a second, you will see why that is important. Uh, 
click on the page itself and as you can see here is uh, the shortcut to the page logic or this icon right here it's the same thing click on this on, on page enter we will add the logic to retrieve data from the countries table countries and to place this data into the container data model you will see the dynamic list uh, section here and then there is a block set dynamic list to countries container notice that it uses the name that we assigned that's why I said that assigning a name is important so you can differentiate between different containers on your page uh, if you didn't assign this name it would just say container 1 2 and 3 whatever the number that was assigned by the system so this places the data into the data model of the container now the data isn't there and what we need to do is we need to apply data binding between these labels and the data that isn't there uh, to do this select uh, the label where you want the dynamic data to show up click on the uh, logic and uh, in here see the these are the events that occur when mouse is over that label uh, or it's clicked and what we want is we have content logic and data binding so in here we can apply the binding to individual properties of the objects that come back and then one of the properties is going to be the name and in this case this will display the name of the country this will be bound to population population and this will be bound to continent continent and uh, so these two rows becomes our template and uh, let's just put a divider between the templates so between every two rows there needs to be a divider let me just add another row so this is the row the cell will take up all the space full width and into the cell I will place a divider Okay, uh, I want this cell to be as uh, small as possible. So what I will do is min height, I will just put zero, so it's going to be the smallest, and remove any padding, because when we have the divider, we don't want any additional space around it. So that, that was the cell, and uh, let's modify the row properties, min height, also put zero so now this divider is going to be taking up the minimum vertical space let's see what we have because at this point we should already have it working go to preview the page loads and now we get all the data notice that we have static content which is country name essentially just our labels and all the dynamic content but it looks kind of ugly so let's uh, make it more compact and without taking up all the all the space so uh, to make it more compact what we need to do is uh, change the layout of these individual cells so select cell and uh, by default the direction is top to bottom we want to change it to left to right for all of them like this we might want to give some padding for our labels and that will be padding on the right let's say 10 pixels and uh, for cells we want to change the height and we will need to do the same thing for the rows so now it is it is more compact now for the row we can also remove the minimum height and let's go there and reload our page so as this is more compact uh, but as a demo I think this will work of course not beautiful but completely functional uh, and uh, in here as you can see we have data binding we have a template that consists of three rows and all of it working exactly as we expected so this completes the demonstration of the container component. I hope you found this useful and we'll start using it in your UI Builder applications. Thank you and as always, happy Codeless Coding!